the gig economy is facing a major overhaul, overhaul in California. Vicky Pineda has the latest. And the 10 remaining Democratic presidential candidates have another debate. Find out who stood out from the much smaller crowd. Coming up in entertainment, Oprah is back on tour for the first time in five years. And the tropics are turning with a new storm following Dorian's tracks. Find out where it's headed in weather. Good evening and welcome to the Friday the 13th edition of New Scene. I'm Jesus Lopez. And I'm Susana Serrano. The top 10 Democratic presidential candidates took to the stage for their third debate last night. Healthcare, gun control, and immigration were the hot button topics covered in the three hour event. Julian Castro took on former Vice President Joe Biden, claiming his health care plan could cost too much. He also delivered a jab that many saw as questioning Biden's mental acuity. Candidates argued on how best to end racism in America and what they would do to fight climate change. President Trump chimed in before the debate, saying he thinks at this point that, in, that it's a three-way race between Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and Biden. Now, a new bill that has major implications for businesses throughout the state is waiting for the governor's signature. Vicky Pineda has the details. Vicky? Thank you. At changing, changing the way the gig economy runs in the state. And app-based companies like Uber and Lyft are pushing back. Local State Assemblywoman Lorena Gonzalez created Assembly Bill 5. She is hoping to change the employment status of more than a million workers classified as independent contractors. Under the bill, many would instead be classified as employees. Pass AB5! Help workers survive! Pass AB5! Help workers survive! It preserves our current union jobs because I guarantee you, if the new normal is if I hire you over an app, you have no rights. Every one of our jobs are at stake, even mine, because we will all become demand workers. Misclassification is running rampant, and we have to really say that if a company uses a worker as an employee in their basic course of business, they're an employee. They have to ensure that that employee has uh, the right to minimum wage and overtime, the right to basic protections like workers' compensation and unemployment insurance, possibly health care. We are the working class of America, and we work hard not just for ourselves, but we work for our families and we work for our communities. And we are worth so much more than these companies will ever, ever deserve. We're gonna rebuild the middle class in California. We're gonna rebuild the middle class in the United States. Let's do it. Almost half of California workers who participate in the gig economy struggle with poverty. Many students on college campuses like San Diego City College, rely heavily on app-based jobs for at least some of their income. The new bill would ensure benefits like minimum wage, insurance, and sick leave are available for workers at companies like Uber, Lyft, and Grubhub. AB5 could also affect other businesses such as trucking, exotic dancing, and commercial fishing. The bill passed the assembly late on Tuesday before getting the same results in the Senate, and in both cases, it was along party lines. Most Democrats voted in favor of it, while most Republicans opposed. Governor Gavin Newsom told the Wall Street Journal on Wednesday that he is still negotiating with gig economy companies about possible exemptions to the bill. Even with the list potentially growing, Newsom is still expected to sign the bill. The governor has shown support of AB5 in the past. If the bill passes, it will likely bring the issue of the gig economy. And that's all I have. Back to you at the desk. Thank you, Vicki. Okay. Big losses to its bottom line have led to layoffs at Uber. The ride-sharing company has laid off 8% of its employees after losing $5 billion last quarter. 
The passing of AB5 has rideshare drivers fearing they would be reclassified from independent contractors to employees. Executives say drivers will continue to be self-employed with the ability to decide when, where, and how much they want to drive. Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash are uniting together, investing $30 million towards a 2020 ballot, 2020, excuse me, ballot measure to keep rideshare drivers as independent contractors. And now for a shakeup at the White House, President Trump on Tuesday announced he fired his national security advisor, John Bolton. Trump says he disagreed strongly with Bolton's suggestions on range of issues. Bolton served as Trump's national security advisor for about 16 months. Prior to, uh, to becoming a national security advisor, Bolton was a Fox News commentator. He served as the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. under President George Bush. Bolton's replacement will be announced next week. President Trump wants to ban flavored e-cigarettes in response to the vaping health crisis. Trump said the FDA would come out with strong recommendations for those products within the next two weeks. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar says the goal of the ban is to get rid of all non-tobacco flavored e-cigarettes. Juul, one of the bigger e-cigarettes companies, says it agrees with Trump and would follow any order from the FDA. The proposed ban comes as a sixth person has died due to vaping. Cooling tensions between China and the U.S. is leading to major changes in the timeline for new tariffs. China has, be, has made some ex exceptions on the tariffs of 16 U.S. imports. President Trump responded by postponing some tariffs for, the, uh, for the two weeks. The markets welcomed the change, the change as the step toward trying, the, uh, trying to end the, war, the trade war, which is going for the past year. There are plans for a, pri a preliminary meeting between the sides in Washington later this month. Turmoil continues to surround Great Britain's plan to exit the European Union. The British Prime Minister suspended Parliament earlier this week, preventing opposition to his Brexit plan. The action has caused an uproar with court. Challenges now underway to block the move. Scotland's highest court has ruled the Prime Minister misled the Queen when he persuaded her to support the suspension. The High Court in London disagreed with the Scottish Court and considers the move as a political and unworthy of its attention. The challenge now moves on to the UK Supreme Court, where the matter will be decided. An Arizona state uh, trooper is facing a long list of sex abuse charges, and the list could grow as more victims are found. In all, over 60 charges have been filed. 43-year-old Truth Maine Jackson Eight victims so far are accusing a 13-year veteran of the Arizona Department of Public Safety. Jackson is accused of, abuse, of sexual abuse, sexual extortion, kidnapping, and harassment. He was relieved from duty right after he was arrested and later fired. A closure of beaches surrounding Imperial Beach Pier is still on effect today. More details coming up next. On fire. The, the NFL is. I can't. <laughs> the NFL is, is back. back. Girl. Sorry about that. <laughs> From college football <laughs> to the um, pros. pros. Find out more coming up. What to expect when you're expecting? Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to team proof your home. First step hide the car keys, preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the mom. You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> a dozen church leaders from California-based church ministry have been indicted by a federal grand jury. The leaders are accused of holding homeless people against their will, stripping them from their welfare benefits, and forcing them to panhandle for over 54 hours a week. 
Imperial Valley Ministries recruited people by promising them food and shelter. U.S. Attorney Robert Brewer says the leaders will face charges of conspiracy, forced labor documents, servitude, and benefit fraud. Brewer adds the indictment accuses the defendants of holding victims in facilities located in, the, in El Centro, San Diego, and Bronxville, Texas. California senators have passed a state-mandated man bill for rent control as residents continue to struggle with homelessness and affordable housing. Assembly Bill 1482 would cap rent increases at 10% each year for most tenants. Gov Governor Newsom calls it the strongest rent control package in America. The bill does have some exceptions, including homes built within the last 15 years. If assembly members approve the bill, it will go into effect on the 1st of next year. The San Diego City Council declared a new state of emergency this week on raw sewage. Plastic old tires and dirty sediments have been flowing down the San Diego River from Mexico and across the border. The spills have resulted in millions of gallons of sewage and other waste coming into the South Bay, causing beach closures and bad odors. Residents have reported skin rashes, headaches, and respiratory issues. The San Diego Board of Supervisors, uh, Young signed off on the creation of a mental health program for first responders. The program will provide quick access to professional help for those facing a crisis. One of the services it will offer is a smartphone app to com confidentially and recklessly provide care. The program was named after Ryan J. Mitchell, a Cal Fire captain who took his own life. Supervisor Craig Cox reminded the public that first responders face gruesome and chilling situations. The San Diego, okay. the San Diego City, College, City College Health Center held a blood drive on 9-11 in memory of the September 11th attacks. The blood drive memorialized the fallen victims and first responders at Ground Zero in 2001. The event also commemorated the San Diego residents who donated 380 pints of blood to New York with help from the U.S. Navy and the San Diego Blood Bank. In case you missed it, the next blood drive on campus will be on October 8th from 10 a.m. to 4 in the evening. Protests in the state capitol are continuing after California Governor Newsom signed a bill aimed at limiting bogus medical exemptions to vaccines, vaccines for children. Anti-vax protesters marched outside the governor's office demanding a veto. Health issues that say vaccines are vital to keeping schools, children safe from preventable diseases. The law will create new standardized exemption certificate, certific certificates to be sent to public schools. College athletes in California are one step closer to making money off their own name and likeness. The California State Assembly voted this week in favor of SB 206, known as the Fair Pay to Play Act. If the legislation is signed into law, college athletes will be able to sign endorsement deals and profit from the usage of their likeness. College athletes will also be able to hire agents to represent them. SB 206 was introduced by State Senators Nancy Skinner and Steve Bradford. If Governor Newsom signs SB 206 into law, it would go into effect January 1st, 2023. The Aztecs are making history. NFL is back. Couldn't be more exciting. Bernice has more in sports. Bernice? Thanks. We start with big news from Montezuma Mesa, where the Aztecs are still flying high after a historic victory over UCLA. Think about it. Before last Saturday's convincing 23-14 victory over the Bruins, the closest SDSU has ever come to a win over UCLA was a 13-13 tie back in 1924. You heard that right. Calvin Coolidge was president, Edgar J. Hoover was taking over the FBI, and the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade was making its debut. It was so long ago that the game took place right across the street from San Diego City College at the Balboa Stadium. 
The 2019 edition took place in the legendary Rose Bowl in Pasadena before one of the smallest crowds to ever watch a Bruins game there. But crowd size did, not, did nothing to diminish the meaning of this win, which keeps the Aztecs undefeated. SCSU now looks forward to visit, a, to visit to New Mexico State tomorrow. Kickoff is set for 5 p.m. local time. And now, that's all the time we have for sports. Back to you at the desk. Well, that's good news from sports. <laughs> <laughs> and now with... Um, San Diego Unified and Chula Vista Elementary Schools District are bringing us some nice events and we'll have that after the break. Oh, Vanessa, you gonna text her back? Nope, I'm high. I'm gonna hit the treadmill. You're already making good decisions when you're high. We need to go meet the guys. I'm lit. Can you drive? Nope. I'm high. How about they come over? Where? Don't make an exception when it comes to driving. If you feel different, you drive different. San Diego Unified and Chula Vista Elementary School districts are outperforming most others in California. The Learning Policy Institute released a report that highlights diverse, high-performing districts. The report focuses on programs that help boost success, success despite external factors, like poverty, which is a major predictor of, of low school achievement. Successful strategies include added teachers and administrator training, coaching, and collaborating. San Diego City College has welcomed its newest food option, the Right Juice Truck. Looking to expand the campus food options, the administration set forward to bring new options for the 2019 fall semester. Students craving natural juices, smoothies, and bowls can head over to AH Quad and on Tuesdays and Thursdays to find the food truck. The Port of San Diego is kicking off the upcoming cruising ship season by offering trips to new exotic destinations. Disney, Holland, American, and Carnival Lines return for the 2019-2020 season. They are now joined by the ultra-luxury pond exotic destinations like Tahiti, the Sea of Cortez, and the Panama Canal are now available. 104 cruises are scheduled this season up over 10% from the year ago. Cruises um, are a vital contributor to the San Diego economy with around $2 million generated per cruise that originates and returns to San Diego. Drag Queen Story Hour is here to stay, says Chula Vista Mayor, but not everyone is excited about the news. Shonda has more on the story. <laughs> Queens entertain kids for story hour in Chula Vista despite weeks of protests calling for cancellation. Drag Queens Barbecue and Rockalita performed for a crowded auditorium of nearly 300 kids and their families during two shows on Wednesday afternoon. Due to high interest, the event was moved to the larger Civic Center Library from Otai Ranch. The performers read picture books, danced, and sang on stage inside the library. A different scene raged outside as protesters and supporters engaged in a shouting match. <laughs> Opponents urged the city to cancel, saying exposure to drag is inappropriate and confusing to kids. I was initiated very early, and I think it, it takes away your innocence, it confuses you, it gives you a lifetime of struggle. A heavy police presence kept watch over the crowds who arrived hours early. Supporters say it promotes diversity and imaginative play. Many came dressed for the occasion. And for that moment, they get to pretend and children get to participate in that imagination and participate in the diversity that's in that. I mean, it'd be kind of boring if we all dressed as Batman in Halloween, right? 
Families from all over the county came out in support of Drag Queen Storytime. Many said they can't wait until next time. Reporting from Chula Vista, I'm Shonda Walker for News Scene. Thank you, Shonda. That was a great package. Uh, that was a great story. Mission Valley is gaining a massive remodel, adding tens of thousands of homes to the area over the next three decades. The City Council approved the most recent update to the Mission Valley Community Plan, which will trip, triple its population by 2050. Supporters say the plan will create a much-needed increase in housing and commercial development. It will also focus on making the area more pedestrian friendly, extending the reach of tro trolley services, bike lanes, and parks near the San Diego River. Hasbro maker of the iconic Monopoly board game has announced a new version of the game with an interesting twist. It's called Miss Monopoly and features Mr. Monopoly's niece as the main character. The most notable change to the game is how much money players are paid. When players pass go, for example, men will get the usual $200 while women will get $240. The game is currently available to buy online at Walmart for $19.99. What? That's great. Talk about diversity. For the first time in five years, Oprah is back on tour. Tasia tells us what's happening in entertainment. Tasia? Thanks. Well, we start off tonight with a battle, a Twitter battle, that unfolded over the weekend between a pair of unlikely foes, President Trump and the model Chrissy Teigen. In a series of tweets, the president claimed, quote, Filthy Mouth Teigen and her born musician husband John Legend, among others, were taking credit for recent criminal justice reforms. Legend had appeared on a television televised town hall meeting on criminal justice reform. Well known as a savvy tweeter, the 33-year-old model and mother of two responded with a few choice words herself. In an interview days after the exchange, Tegan revealed she was surprised, saying, quote, You just wait for him to say something, but you don't think it's going to be you. Not surprising, hashtag Team Chrissy and hashtag Filthy Mouthed Wife were trending on Twitter long after the exchange ended. Another model is making big news, this time with her latest and most revealing magazine cover. Kylie Jenner will be featured in Playboy's upcoming pleasure issue, bearing all in a risque photo shoot, alongside her rapper boyfriend, Travis Scott. Jenner previewed her poses, and in one, shared one on Instagram. Jenner is wearing only a cowboy hat on her head against Scott, who is standing shirtless. The cover was shot by Jenner's longtime photographer, Sasha Samsonova, and Scott served as creative director. Now, from one story of a transcending billionaire to another, who wouldn't like a stronger, healthier, more abundant life? Look no further for your answer than the one and only Oprah. The 65-year-old media mogul is hoping to motivate people to claim 2020 as their year of transformation. Oprah's new tour aims to bring people together and inspire them with the wellness tools they need. Her 2020 Vision Tour will be an all-day event filled with celebrity guest appearances and top health experts in wellness as well. It will also include Oprah's one-on-one -on -one interviews that she is so well known for. To top it all off, $1 million from tour proceeds will be donated to the WW Good, the Weight Watchers Social Impact Campaign. It provides fresh, healthy foods to underserved communities. The tour won't stop in San Diego, but it will visit Los Angeles February 29th. Oprah fans, so get your tickets and back to you at the desk. That is great. Well, Oprah says, when you know better, you do better. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good saying. That is a good saying. Yeah. Well, now more with the serious talk. Uh, we've, been in, in, we've been in some um, tropics. It's the peak of hurricane season, and therefore we... We have a lot of storms brewing the, in the Atlantic, but we do have Chad with more, but that will be after we come back from the break, okay? The Dog's Way Home is the story of the extraordinary lengths a dog will go to in order to get back to their family. Every year, millions of dogs and cats end up in shelters and rescue groups. We found our Bella at a shelter in Tennessee. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover they're all pure love. <laughs> Adopt pure love and help a shelter pet find their way home at the shelterpetproject.org. Well, we're back and we do have a lot of weather discussions to make and further ado, here's Chad with weather.
guys uh, continuing Hurricane Dorian coverage or rather the aftermath that is still going strong in the Bahamas 1300 people have been registered as missing and the death toll remains at 50 and now there is another possible tropical cyclone that is forming near the Bahamas uh, we can never tell for sure what's going to happen with it. We couldn't tell for sure what's going to happen with Dorian. But a tropical storm warning has been issued, and we will watch. It is hurricane season and a pretty bad one, which happens every couple of years. And really interesting, actually close to us, uh, a possible tropical cyclone forming under Mexico, under Baja California Sur, is actually going to affect us uh, with the monsoonal moisture that it makes. Uh, there we go. Uh, so, so yeah, it, uh, mons if you notice, it's really hot lately, and the monsoonal moisture is a result of that tropical cyclone. Let's take a look at the temperatures, because it's actually going to cool a lot down. Take a look at the coastals, starting out in the 80s, but getting nice and down to, well, the high 70s. But look at those lower temps. Let's take a look at the inland. Inland is going to be a little warmer, but it will cool down. Look at those lows. I want to show everyone the lows because you might think that this is the temperature, but it might not feel like that. I mean, Howard Stern was saying the other day, it says one temperature and it says feels like a different temperature. Isn't that what the original temperature feels like? Well, with numbers aside, we'll tell you what it feels like. Inland, it's going to be dry, but overall it is going to cool down. Now, how about feeling spooky? I want you all to harvest the 13th because it is a special moment that has not happened in a long, long time. It's a harvest moon, which happens frequently, but on this Friday the 13th, bad luck. Two things from bad luck. A harvest moon is when the dust from the farmers making the seasonal food goes up into the air and it turns the mood red. But I don't think it creates bad luck because we've been having a really good show today, a really good day. I had a double cheeseburger with pickles, and I think we should all have a block party tonight. I'm on my way right now. Back to the desk. <laughs> Sorry, you <laughs> caught me watching chat. It was very entertaining. In something out of the Game of Thrones episodes, paleontologists have uh, found the remains of new species of dinosaurs resembling a dragon, giving a name that translates to frozen dragon. Take the rest of the story, Susie. Uh, frozen dragon of the north, wind in Greek. Um, were found in the dry terrain of Canada's Badlands, and it's said to be the largest flying animal that has ever existed with a wingspan of 33 feet. It flew over North America nearly 80 million years ago. The bones were first discovered three decades ago, but the paleontologists who found them believe they belong to a different species <sighs> that was initially discovered in Texas. The carnivorous animal lived in modern-day Alberta, Canada during the Cretaceous period, according to a study in the Journal of Vertebrate Paleontology. Holy moly, I would have never finished all those words, but well, that's good night. Have a safe weekend. Have a safe weekend. Thank you so much.